uh, yeah, my name is Christian. Uh, this is my first like actual sermon I'm giving, so please bear with me. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, that's good. There's not that much people, so that's good. It's less intimidating. Okay, so today's topic is challenges. Um, actually, I got this title on Pastor Mike. Actually, texted me asking me to give a sermon, and uh, you know, I was very like. I don't know, I was hesitating. I was kind of like, this, this is not my thing. I don't like talking to people like that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but I just said yes. Like, even though I was feeling so nervous or uncomfortable, I was just like, yes, I'll just do it. And that's when I found out what my topic was. It was challenges. I just did that. You know, I just challenged myself to just do it. Sometimes, yeah, you just, just do it, you know? So, uh, yeah, that's how I got this topic. And, um, yeah, when you hear the word, like, challenges, I feel like there are mixed feelings about it. Uh, some people feel like uncomfortable, um, disgusted by it too. Um, but uh, while some people are very like happy and eager to challenge themselves. But uh, no matter how you feel about it, uh, I feel like uh, every day there's a challenge. There's something, you know, that you have to go over at home. Um, so it could be like even the smallest things, like waking up early. Like I struggle waking up early. Like I like to sleep in and just like. I don't know, just lay down, you know, it feels good. So, yeah, um, yeah, so also like, you know, people got to pay rent, right? That could be hard too on time, things like that. I don't pay rent, so I'm good. Uh, or like beating the final boss in a video game, right? Yeah. Things like that, yeah. Uh, also like people in general can be challenging, like relationship with other people. So, you know, I'm going to give an example. I, I remember... Uh, my volleyball team back in school, there's this one guy on my volleyball team. Oh my God, that dude was selfish, bro. It was, it was always about him. And he always talk about himself. And then, like, I hear people like, bro, this. He would tell people, like, like our team, we sucked, basically. His teammates were trash, things like that. And that kind of like, I ignored it, but that kind of like triggered me, right? Um, so he was like, yeah, it was very kind of hard to kind of, how do I say? have like a good relationship with him or feel like, you know, I, I can actually like forgive him. It was kind of hard, right? And like he was the only dude that could like, I usually don't get mad, but during practices when he talks trash and like it gets too much, like I, I, I go crazy, you know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> I would like yell things, right? And like it surprises everybody. Like I don't like yell or get mad like that, but he's like the only dude that gets me mad. So like, um, yeah, I think I had like a, that, that was a challenge right there, right? relationship with him, but I think, like, ultimately, like, we're good, though. Like, at the end, well, we're, we're good because we're not teammates anymore, so that's why we're good, but, like, ultimately, like, you know, we have challenges, right? Uh, different relationships with other people, but, um, yeah, it's, it's not always easy to overcome, things like that, but um, anyways, I enjoyed volleyball, though. It was good. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, challenges is a very, like, scary word to say, um, in today's world, like, we like to stay comfortable um, and do things that, are, that we're good at, right? Um, and do the same things every single day. So, uh, yeah, we don't, like, normally, we don't want to be uncomfortable, basically. And when we do, we have a feeling of stress or dread, right? And, uh, yeah, we just don't want to, like, push our limits, things like that. So it's easier to make excuses not to do challenges, like, I have this to do. Uh, I'm too tired, I'll do it later. Um, uh, procrastinate, basically, like, waiting to the very end to do, like, a project, finish a project. So that was, like, me at school. Um, I remember uh, psychology class, like, we had a project to do, and they had, like, a, a timeline of different parts you got to finish. I, I just did the project, like, maybe, like, a week before it was due, right? Like, I, I waited to the end to actually do the thing. I passed, though. It's good. Anyways. <laughs> and I think it works for me, you know, waiting to the end. I like, I don't know, something with stress. Like, it stresses me out. Well, I, I use that energy to, just like, do my best, just go crazy, you know? So, yeah, it was, it was really bad, honestly, throughout, like, school. Like, whenever, you know, uh, I had to write, like, essays, too. And, like, it would, it would be so bad. Like, I would do, I would write, begin my essay the week before it's due. And I have to write like seven pages, basically. So yeah, I, I really, <laughs> I struggle with that. You know, homework, oh my goodness. I remember homework for math. It was due like on Sunday, right? 
and I would do it like after church or like in the evening and just there's like 20 to 30 questions to do and they're not easy you know I'd be <laughs> it's not easy I'd be like watching the videos to help me I'm like what is this guy saying I don't understand I don't get it but you know that's something I got to work on though, right and I don't know, some of you might do that you know wait to the end to do something you know things like that um, yeah but challenges are secretly I think a gift from God Basically, so, uh, so this is uh, James. He says, "Count it all joy, uh, my brothers, uh, when you meet trials of various kinds. If you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing." Um, so yeah, from what I guess I understand from James, is saying that you have to be joyful when facing challenges. Right, uh, because you're strengthening your faith in God and uh, removing your fallen natures, so becoming a perfect being, and uh, you know, be, I don't know, being joyful during challenges is very hard. Like, how do you be joyful? You know, uh, I think when challenges do come, it's like, like I don't want to go through this, right? And um, you know, the only time like I'm excited for a challenge is in sports, like. When I'm facing an opponent that's really good, I'm like really excited to like challenge myself to see, you know, battle this person, right? Or this opponent. And, um, and sometimes like in sports, you know, I don't have the right attitude. I remember, uh, you guys heard of Peace Cup? Peace Cup, there's one, uh, Peace Cup coming up the end of June. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Anyways, I remember like we were playing basketball, right? And my attitude was really bad. Like, I was looking at my own team. I'm like, who do we have on our team? I'm like, only Izzy. Like, everybody else is, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but everybody else, they don't play basketball, right? And I'm looking at this other team. Like, all these guys are like six foot tall, like buff dudes. It's just like, I don't know. I'm just looking at myself and everybody else. I'm like, what, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> you know, so like that attitude was so bad. That really, I played really bad, honestly, that situation. I, because I started off like with a really bad attitude. I was really like, we're going to lose. That was my mentality right there. And uh, yeah, we, you know, we lost. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. But you know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I'm trying to think. I'm not going to talk about that. No, I'm not talking about that. No, I'm not. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's hard to have a joyful heart when facing challenges. So, I remember the time coming back from GPA. Actually, um, it was really hard for me to like uh, go back into an environment that's different. GPA is a really like high spirit. Like everybody's about God, two parents, you know. And you know, when I come back home, it's just everybody's doing their own thing, you know? It's about politics, TikTok, I don't know, Fortnite, I don't know, stuff like that. Like, it's like, yeah, like everybody's doing their own thing, right? And I was, it was so hard for me to have like a right attitude about it. And I felt like I was letting that environment affect me, kind of. So it was really hard for me to actively wanting to seek to get out of that kind of attitude that I had. Um, but Luckily, I had a mentor. Um, you remember? Uh, do you guys know uh, Connor Redman? Yeah. Uh, he was my, he was my uh, mentor that kind of helped me kind of get back into uh, living like life out of GPA. So you know, he told me to kind of like be more engaged with my family, do activities, things like that. So it helped me a lot. So I would like kind of kind of get out of myself, right? And started uh, you know playing games with my family, doing sports. Uh, we actually did Hundoke together as a family, and uh, it wasn't easy. I think we haven't done Hundoke actually this, this year, I think. No, anyways, it was, it was good though, while it lasted. So, uh, yeah, and you know, coming, yeah, just coming back like from GPA, like there's challenges that always comes, right? Uh, I remember um, it was like last summer, uh, we, it was a uh, camp journey, after camp journey, um, the captains, we uh, kind of stayed at an Airbnb and stuff like that, and just hanging out. And we went to a lagoon park 
It's called the Lagoon Park. It's like an amusement park. It has like big roller coasters and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm not going on there. Like, I don't, I don't like roller coasters at all. Like, I'm, I'm not going on there. So, of course, uh, what's the, who was there? Elvis was there. Yoshi, showed you, Nick. You were there. I don't know. Yoshi, you weren't there, were you? No, it wasn't. Okay. But they wanted to go to, like, the scariest looking roller coaster first, of course. And they wanted <laughs> I, I just sat out. I was like, I'm not going on there. Right? I'm not going on there. And like, I sat out, and they, after they were done, I was like, finally, we can leave. They went up again. And then <laughs> they wanted to go a third time. And then they, like, forced me to come. They forced me to, to go on a roller coaster that I did not want to go. So, like, I was just, anyways, I was just waiting in line, just, like, thinking how to escape. You know, get away. <laughs> so I was just, like, blend in and just run away. And, um, <laughs> anyways, you know, when, it, when I went on the coaster, you know, I, I was just so scared. I sat in the middle of the coaster. There's, like, three seats, right? And I went to the middle to make sure I don't, like, fall off just in case. <laughs> And like, I was sitting next. I was sitting next to like a little girl. She's all excited and stuff. I'm like, what are you excited for? Like, I'm here like stressing out. Like I'm, like, it's, and she's all like, this is going to be so fun. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not going to be fun. And like, we were going like up. The roller coaster goes like, I don't know how high, but like, oh my god. Like we were going up forever. It felt forever. Like, I was like, when are we going to go down, right? And like. You know, yeah, when, you know, when we, like, went through the uh, coaster thing or whatever, uh, the ride, you know, I closed my eyes the whole time, but I don't know, it was, it was really, it was kind of fun, to be honest, <laughs> you know? And the little girl was like, it wasn't that bad, right? I'm like, yeah, you're right, it's not that bad. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I don't know, that kind of set me up for the other, like, uh, coasters, that, the roller coasters that they had, right? I feel like the... The biggest challenge is actually attacking the challenge and actually trying to get over that hump. And after that, things get easier for you. And that's that kind of like, that's what I realized when going on the roller coasters and stuff. So after that, like, I was going on every roller coaster that I wouldn't want to go on. Like, I was having so much fun. You know, I sat up for one, though. I needed to chill. I needed to, like, calm down real quick. But, yeah, I mean, it was amazing, honestly. I enjoyed my, my time there, and that, that was a challenge that I was able to overcome. Like heights, yeah. So it was great. Um, yeah. So I think attitude is really important when facing challenges. So it could determine your outcome. And uh, I guess something that I learned from GPA that I always kept with myself was that you can't control your environment, but you can control your attitude. Right? Uh, I mean, this really helped me a lot with driving. I feel like there's a, there's a lot of like road rage, right? And like, I don't know. I don't know why California people keep coming here, but they're the reason why there's so much road rage. Like they cannot drive. I'm sorry, soldier. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. He's from California. He's okay, you know, at driving. He's all right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. I mean, it was. I don't know. Like people can cut in front of you and just like it can make you triggered. Like it, it can get you mad easily. And I realized I was getting mad over it. Like. So small things, just so dumb. Like people cut me off. This person doesn't know driving the wrong way. Like, what are you doing? You know. And you know, I, I think that that challenge it helped me kind of fix my attitude, right? When things like that happen, like the smallest things, and like it helped me, like uh, just kind of yeah, keep that same attitude, not letting that environment kind of change up how I reacted, right? So. And nowadays, when people cut me off, things like that, I'm like, okay, cool. I just move on. It's that simple. So, yeah, I think really attitude really is really important. And I think with the joyful attitude, the challenge can be a lot more easier to overcome and be more fun. Right? And uh, we want to be joyful when challenges come, or at least fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. And um, going, back to, going back to James, um, he also mentions that... Uh, at the end, he says, you have to be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing, right? Um, I think that means, like, you know, we, we leave no shadows behind, right? Um, we become perfected being. Um, and that, uh, you know, right now, we don't have everything that we want, right? Because uh, there are errors in ourselves that we have to work on, 
And there's places that God wants us to keep working and overcome. And, you know, everyone has their own limitations. Um, everyone has their own challenges, right? And um, God gave us specific challenges that we have to overcome. So everybody's different um, in that way. Uh, and when we start to get rid of our fallen natures, we become better people. And uh, we're able to start to grow our hearts more. And uh, yeah, I, I heard uh, my mom said in the spirit world, you breathe in like love, right? And uh, if you aren't able to like grow your heart here on earth, um, it's harder to grow your heart in the spirit world, right? So, you know, there are certain areas, if you don't work on yourself right now, there's certain areas in the spirit world you can't go to, right? You, you get suffocated because you don't have enough love you know, to give. And that's why it's important that we work on the areas that we, you know, we have to uh, overcome. Um, you know, that's, that's why God get, gives us these challenges, right? He wants us to be, to grow and to be able to, to be, like, love anyone. You know? um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes it's hard to go through a challenge by yourself, right? And you wonder how it's possible. So, I think Jesus has the answer. Here it is. He says, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, all things with God is possible. You know? I think Jesus really embodied, I guess, God's heart. Um, and I think he wouldn't be able to do the things he did, right? I think without God's love and God, you know, guiding him, right? Um, I remember uh, we did a, a study. I was with... Uh, my mom's guest, and we were studying like the early childhood of Jesus Christ, and uh, I only learned like, you know, his adulthood, right, and his uh, his birth. So I didn't know much about his childhood. Um, so when I read about his childhood, uh, it was really sad, sad, like super sad. Like uh, I remember what part said that uh, uh, so Mary and Joseph they were traveling back from uh, Jerusalem. And after a day of travel, they realized that Jesus was miss, uh, missing, right? So they went back to Jerusalem and found him three days later. You know, imagine like, you know, your own, like, parents, right? They, they don't even recognize that she'd been gone for a whole day, you know? That must be really tough, I think, for Jesus, I think. Yeah, growing up, uh, his parents were like, they didn't give him the love he needed, I feel like. Um, and... Yeah, I think he went, he went through so much challenges, you know, not receiving enough love from his family. And I think God was the main one who, who gave love to Jesus. Um, and he, uh, he's the one that continued to keep, keep giving love to Jesus and throughout his whole, you know, his life. Right? Um, and I, I think a lot of um, able figures throughout biblical history, they went through so many challenges. Um, uh, like uh, Abraham, um, Abraham trying to like sacrifice, you know, Isaac, having to sacrifice Isaac, right? That must be really hard. Like, uh, as a parent, I don't think you would want to. If God told you to sacrifice your only child, right? How would you feel? I, don't know, I think, I think it's really tough. Things like that. Um, yeah, and also like Noah building the ark, right? He, uh, he had to build an ark, and his uh, people were telling him he was crazy. Even his own family was telling him he was crazy, right? And they, I think it's, it's very hard for him, I think, for Noah to kind of deal with that. I think he could deal with other people telling him, like, you're crazy, you know, what are you doing, things like that. But when your own family is kind of like, you know, joining in and telling you how crazy you are, I think, it's, I think it hurts a lot for Noah, and I don't think he would, you know, gone through it without God. You know, God was the one that uh, kept, like, pushing him and, you know, leading him the way. So, yeah. So, it's, it's not easy. And, you know, of course, you know, Jesus, remember, uh, John the Baptist didn't, uh, I mean, he knew he was the Messiah, but, like, he didn't, like, accept Jesus as one. And, you know, uh, so Jesus had to go to, to the woods, I believe, and uh, go overcome three temptations after that, you know. You know, at the end, and uh, you know, Jesus also, you know, he had to go on the cross, right? And I, I think challenging part, right, was kind of like forgiving the people that he that killed him, basically. 
Um, I don't know how he does it. I mean, with God's love, he's able to forgive every, anyone, but you know, forgiving the people that, that want you dead, it's like, I don't know, that's a different type of love right there. You know, um, you know nowadays people can't forgive easily over the smallest things, right? Like, you know, someone can remember, you know, you know, you ripped my Pokemon card or whatever. I can't forgive you for that. Or, Bro, that was like 10 years ago. Let it go. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's just the smallest things that people can kind of get triggered and they, they can't forgive, you know? Like, I, I can imagine just like an old guy, man just like in his bed not being able to sleep because back in like, 1963 on May 2nd, s- someone took his lollipop. Like, <laughs> well, you, you were a baby. What do you mean? Like, that was a long time ago, you know? Well, maybe I'm exaggerating, but, you know, there might be people out there. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, like I said, lots of biblical figures have to go through so many challenges. But, you know, they didn't just have faith in God. But yeah, they were going through the challenge with God. And without God's like love and guidance, I don't think they would be able to overcome these challenges, right? Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I remember, uh, yeah, when I came back from GPA, I had a friend, a school friend that I've known for like, what, it's been like 10 years. We were like really close friends. And I remember uh, he invited me to go to his house and, um, you know, because he, he wanted to catch up, things like that. And, you know, I was just chilling with him. And, like, all of a sudden, he's all like, what do you believe in? Things like that. And, like, I never actually told him who I was. I would be like, you know, I'm Christian, you know. My name's Christian. I'm Christian. <laughs> Simple like that. I tell everybody that, you know. Back in school, you know, everybody knew me as Christian. He goes, my name's Christian. It's easy. It's easy. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I felt like God was kind of guiding me. He set that up for me. You know, he did 95% of that work to set that up. I just got to do my 5%. And, uh, you know, and, you know, God was just telling me, we're like, don't mess this up, bro. <laughs> just tell him. I'm like, yeah. So I, I just, like, told, you know, told him about who I was, who, who I truly was. And I think it was an ex- amazing experience, actually, kind of telling my friend who I was. And uh, it was great. You know, I, I showed him the DP, too, like, what we studied. And, you know, he was very open-minded, I feel like. And, uh, you, know, we, you know, we still hang out to this day. And, and we never bring up the topic, though, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I don't know, it was amazing. You know, I, I came back home, told my parents that I, what I did, and my mom's like, oh, you should witness him and stuff. I'm like, I'm not Japanese, fully Japanese. <laughs> Only half Japanese, okay? I cannot go out witnessing like that. All right, bro? He's my best friend, too, so. I'll witness him naturally. You know, True Mother says we have to, she wants us to naturally witness. So that's what I'm going to do, you know. Sorry, I'm not fully Japanese. Anyways. <laughs> uh, so like I said, uh, you could go through challenges by yourself, right? But it's easier to do it with God, I think. Uh, and we shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. I think a lot of people, I think, are just too scared to ask for help, right? Because, um, you know, they don't want to see, see, uh, be, be seen as, like, weak, right? Someone that can't overcome. But I think it, it's always helpful to ask someone for help all the time. Um, I know for uh, I said, the, our youngest in our family, Chunny, uh, he, he was playing Legend of Zelda. And he couldn't beat this one boss or whatever. And, like, this dude was about to cry. Like, <laughs> he was about to cry. But he went on YouTube, right, asking for help. Like, how do I do this? How do I beat this guy? And like, you know, he was able to beat him, right? And he was so happy and joyful. I'm like, this dude was about to cry like a second earlier. Now this dude is so happy, right? And so, yeah, I think with anything, it's okay to ask for help when challenges come. It's okay. I think it helps you, it helps you a lot. And um, yeah, God wants, us, wants to help us and guide us through our trials, right? And he doesn't want to see us suffer by ourselves. Uh, I think it hurts his heart a lot. Uh, that we have to go through these challenges and suffer sometimes, but he knows it's the, uh, it's good for us, right? He knows what's best for us, and that's why he he wants us to go through all these things in order to grow and become better people, 
right? To be like him, right? His, uh, to grow his heart just like God uh, gives his heart to other people, right? Um, yeah, which, uh, you know, it leads to my last point right here. Uh, which is uh, having a higher purpose when doing challenges, right? This is a uh, Schumacher on uh, her book, A Matter of Peace. He said, before setting foot in North Korea, we have to resolve any painful feelings knotted up in our hearts. We have to forgive Kim Il-sung, whose regime had hurt the nation and world, not to mention our extended family and ourselves. Uh, I think uh, it's crazy. Uh, I don't know how you're... I don't know how they do it, right? How they are able to forgive someone that gave so much pain, right? Um, you know, Chumutter had to leave her home. She had to escape to South Korea from a war. And, you know, I heard that they were walking, we were just like walking around the island in Hawaii, right? Just trying to let go of, yeah, any, any feelings of hatred, things like that. Because, uh, you know, they had a higher purpose. You know, they couldn't let their feelings get in the way for God's providence, right? They, uh, they wanted to unite North and South Korea. They want to bring a world of peace, right? Ultimately bring Chun Il Guk here. And, um, you know, that's how they were able to kind of go through that. I felt they had like a higher purpose that they can go back to whenever they feel like some kind of feeling of you know, resentment, things like that. They're doing it not for themselves, but for the world, for God, right? Um, but yeah, like, like I guess she had, she uh, had so many challenges, and uh, you know, I, I looked to, up to her a lot because uh, it, it's not easy. I mean, she married at 17, right? Uh, to true father and had a big responsibility on her back, right? At such a young age, and um, you know, a lot of people. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't treat her as well, right? They didn't treat her good, and, you know, some, some uh, woman would be like, you know, she's, you know, I'm, I'm True Father's uh, bride or whatever. Like, she doesn't deserve to be True Father's uh, wife, things like that, and uh, yeah, she, she went through so much. Um, she gave birth to, what, 14 children. It was crazy, 14 children, like, I can't, like, imagine having, like, 14 children. Imagine having seven kids. That's crazy. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she parents have to even love, you know, Satan's children more, right, uh, than their own for the purpose to bring everyone back to God, right? I think, yeah, their children went through a lot. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, I don't blame them for the things they do or, you know, things they've done because it's not easy. You know, some of them have to go to America, right? And they have to face, like, racism because they were Asian and people were telling, like, they were little kids too. Like, they, adults, like, grown men would tell them, like, your, your, your father's not good, you know? It's, it's, like, really bad. It leaves, like, a bad imprint on the children and, you know, uh, I think it hurt true parents a lot too that they they couldn't be there for their kids that much because they were more focused on uh, I guess Satan's children first. Right? They have to they have to think about them instead of their own children. And uh, you know it's you know I, I get a lot of love from my parents and my my family, my siblings. So you know it, you know I, I I feel lucky that I'm able to have that. You know because true parents. I, it, their family, it, it, it's hard, you know. Uh, you know, your parents are the Messiah, and, you know, they're, they have to work every day, right? They, they're working every day, and you don't get to see them as much, man. Right? But, yeah, I think it's really challenging. Yeah. But, yeah. Now, going back to uh, Shemaiter, she, uh, she has, like, a deep faith in God. I remember reading a part where, uh, she, with her family, she uh, her dad wasn't always there with her, um, but she knew that God was her dad or her father, and you know she can go back to that love, right? She knew that 
since God was her dad, she can go back. Uh, he would always be there with her. So even though her, I guess, physical dad wasn't always around, she'd always go back to God, right? God was always there. And, you know, I, also, I struggle sometimes to think as God as my parent sometimes. I sometimes, I feel like sometimes I feel like, I feel like a, a Christian, you know, just like he's a Lord just up there sitting on a, a throne, right? Just judging people. And, you know, I, I really respect how she met her at such a young age. She kind of, she realized that God was not that, that she was a, he was a parent, right? Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, to this day, she is still working hard, right? She's still aiming uh, to bring uh, the kingdom of heaven on earth here. And um, she's, you know, she's getting old, but, you know, she, she's still working, right? She's working every day. And I think every day is a challenge for her, but she's able to go through that because of her purpose, right? And uh, she can do it with God, with true father, you know. And he has us too, you know. He has us to help her. So, but yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to go back to like a one story. Uh, I was selling flowers um, during graduation week. It was in a uh, end of May. And uh, it was at DU. Do you guys know the Ritchie Center? Anyways, they had like graduations the whole week, right? And, you know, the first day I was feeling good, you know, I selling roses and stuff. And like slowly, like I was getting super tired, like really out of it, you know. And then I was, I was like, bro, I kind of want to go home now, you know. I just kind of want to rest real quick and just, you know, chill out for a bit. But I remember uh, one day, like when I was uh, selling flowers, my, uh, like my dad, he was like, he was with me, right? But he did, he, he was on a chair and he fell asleep. And I'm like, I'm looking at my dad like, huh? <laughs> You know, I, I got the sleepy spirit, too. I was getting sleepy, too. I was, you know. But uh, I told my dad, I was like, I told my dad, you want to go sleep in your car? He was like, yeah, I'll go to the car. And, you know, he went back to the car to sleep. And I don't know, for some reason, I had some energy. You know, I was just like, since my dad is able to get his rest, I'm able to do this now. I'm able to sell roses now, knowing that my dad can have a good rest. That was my higher purpose right there. And that's what pushed me to keep fundraising and selling roses because because uh, my, my dad uh, knowing that my dad could get his rest you know so that, that helped me that gave me energy honestly to really keep pushing myself to keep going right and uh, yeah uh, so it's important to keep in, in mind why you're going through challenges right uh, is it to like unlock a new character in a video game you know is it to become a better you um, you know, are you going through this challenge for, for someone you know, or a close person? Right? And um, I think having a purpose uh, pushes you to overcome a challenge um, and uh, helps you get out of yourself, I think. And kind of think of other people, why are you doing it, who are you doing this for, right? It helped me, I mean, that helps me a lot, right? When I'm thinking of other people, when I'm going through a challenge, I'm able to uh, kind of push myself and I'll get out of myself and how I feel and think of other people. So yeah, uh, remember uh, on GPA second, uh, it was GPA. Um, we had a fundraising condition, so there's something called like uh, runs, right? There's like three runs in a day or four runs. So it's basically it's a get it's a uh, what's it called? They give you a, a, a time amount of time to like fundraise, right? You could fundraise for like three, four hours, even thirty minutes, right? It ranges, but. Uh, I remember that day we were supposed to commit our, ru our run to someone. And uh, I committed it to uh, a whole bunch of people. Uh, I committed it to Tongil, actually, for the first run or fundraising. And uh, I was just committing that, you know, he becomes a good football player. That's it. You know, and I don't know. I was, I was going crazy. Like, everybody was buying my stuff. They were donating. I'm like, dang, this is easy. I'm not going to lie. This is so easy, right? And, like, I went back in the van. And uh, one of my, uh, uh, what's it called? One of my teammates, my friends, um, his name's J Joseph Berge. He had a bad run. Like, he, he didn't get anything. And, like, he was so sad. He's usually, like, the joyful guy. Like, he makes jokes all the time. Even though in the wrong time, he makes jokes. And, like, he's always so high energy, high spirit. Well, I was, like, surprised. He was just, he just, he was just so sad. 
So I was like, okay, this run I'm gonna commit it to Joseph, so he can be happy, right? And I, you know, the next run, I was struggling. I'm not going. <laughs> the first one, it was good. Well, fighting for Joseph, oh my God, I was struggling. Anyways, you know, <laughs> you know, it was tough. But when I came back, right, I, you know, he was joyful. He was like, I, I'm making money. I'm like, <laughs> I was so happy, honestly, for him. You know, I, I just. I don't know, just seeing him happy, it made me happy, even though, even though I made, like, no money. But, you know, yeah, that, yeah, I really, uh, I don't know. It's, it just made me so at high energy, you know. Like, even though I didn't get any result or, like, you know, I got a little bit of money, you know, knowing that I'm, I'm doing this for someone else and that they're happy, it makes me happy. It doesn't matter, right? Um, so, yeah, and then the rest of the runs, I did it for, uh, I think, Chani and Israel. Right, and um, yeah, I, I was able to hit my goal. And I, I don't know, it was, just, it was just an amazing experience. I don't know, there's just something about doing for other people, it, it, just, it just pushes me, you know. I, usually we uh, like uh, fundraising, like restaurants, things like that, usually I like to hesitate and not wanna go in there, right? But like, I'm like, in my mind, like, I'm doing this for, you know, Izzy, I'm doing this for Tongi or Chani, and I just go in, just kinda getting out of myself and how I feel. And, you know, it was great. Um, but anyways, the next day I did it for, the, for my sisters. Uh, it didn't go well. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. So my point from this presentation is that uh, I hope you remember that uh, challenges uh, are a gift from God, okay? And even when it's hard, also know that God will never give a challenge that you can't overcome. Just remember that. So, yeah, thank you so much. All right, let's pray. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Parents, Your Parents, Jesus Spirit, well, thank you for today that uh, we're gathered here as one big family. Um, you know, life is challenging, and you know, we go through, everybody goes through something, right? Everybody has their different uh, path, you know, and God, I want to let you know that uh, we're always uh, here for you, and that the challenges that you do give to us that we can you know, attack it with joy and understand it's to become our uh, better selves and that uh, we're able to you know, overcome these challenges, right? And be able to realize that, you know, you gave this challenge, just challenge for a reason, to grow, to become perfected being. And, you know, I hope that, you know, you can be with us through these challenges and uh, guide us through. and. When we need help, that you'll always be right there for us. You know, and uh, yeah, you know, life is not it's not always going to be easy. It's always going to get hard. And I want to let you know that uh, even though it can be challenging, that we're willing to go through it, and you know, we're willing to go fight through it. You know, and I hope that t today people can take something from this message and uh, really uh, practice it throughout their lives every day. So I'd like to pray this in all names here in my name, Christian Ngolami, son of Steve Hiroko Ngolami, Preston's family, Amen and Aju.